couple of days to defend and answer to the queries that have been raised in that pre pre preliminary audit report. And they're saying the 5 billion shillings being talked about is actually, in fact, an exaggeration, gross exaggeration of the amount of money that should be looked at at this particular point. So tonight, in our big question, we are engaging with you because calls have continued for the CS and the PS to step aside over these allegations. We are asking you whether you think Cabinet Secretary Health, Cleopa Mailu, and the PS Health, Nicholas Muraguri, should step aside pending investigations. Talk to us at uh, KTN News or KTN Kenya at Sophia Wanuna. In fact, one of those voices that is calling for the two to step aside is Aya Irungu Hutton, who's executive director of the Societies for International Development. It's a body that champions good governance. Let's listen to what he told our Ruta Tinina earlier today. There is no confidence in the public with not just the uh, principal secretary, but I think also the cabinet secretary um, will need to both um, cabinet secretary Milo, but also the, his predecessor, cabinet secretary Masharia, will need to you know, separately step aside and allow for an independent uh, investigation to take place. All right, so there are those that are calling for the CS and the PS to step aside in the Ministry of Health up until this matter is resolved. Do you agree with them? Talk to us. You can also send him a, a, send him a message at 22155. Would love to hear from you tonight. But also on Monday night news today, we have Court of Appeal Judge Martha Kome, and she will be talking to us about the backlog uh, of cases and as far as children cases are concerned. She's standing by on the other side of the studio. There's a Judiciary Service Week that's coming up next month from the 14th through to the 18th. There she is. So we'll talk more just about how far are we even in as far as the Children's Bill is concerned. She'll be breaking down for us what that is about and what you need to know come that judicial, uh, Judiciary Service Week in as far as the children are concerned, a very vulnerable group of our society. So stay with us uh, for that and much more. Let's have a look now at our top stories. I will be appointing an independent auditor. The Office of the Auditor General is constitutionally mandated to provide oversight and uh, audit um, of the entire government. What five billion shillings? These are pure exaggerations, so says the Ministry of Health. Mine is to make, it's a messenger which comes and tells you that you asked me to come and check these cars which are passing over. And is he the enemy within, the Auditor General in the face of all the rising queries? You are either with us or with them. We would rather stay in ODM and work with the party. Eight ODM leaders expelled as MPs Onyonka and Ongari beg for pardon. Kenya ni partner number moja katika Afrika ambaye ni muhimu sana kwa Tanzania. Safari hii ni ya kuimarisha huo uhusiano kati ya nchi zetu. Good tidings for the relationship between Kenya and Tanzania with President Magufuli's visit. Right, 10 elected members of the Orange Democratic Movement are now set to lose their seats after they were expelled from the party by the party's top organ, that's the National Governing Council. They include immediate former party secretary general Ababuna Mwamba, Kwale Governor Salim Uvuria, Kisi Deputy Governor Joash Maangi, and six members of parliament. And as Chris Tairo now reports, the party will now write a letter to the registrar of political parties to strike out their names within seven days. Members of the ODM National Governing Council converged at the Bombers of Kenya to ratify a decision taken by the National Executive Council on Sunday to expel the 10 rebel members as well as to declare their party leader Raila Odinga as the party's presidential candidate ahead of the 2017 general election. ODM. 
and when the list of the rebels was read to the council members, they were all in agreement that they should be expelled. The affected members are Kwale Governor Salim Vuria, Budalangi MP Ababuna Mwamba, and Kisi Deputy Governor Josh Mangi. Others include MP Stephen Karioki, Isaac Mwaura, Zainab Chizuga, Samuel Arama, Mosud Mwahima, John Waluke, and the Nairobi MCA Samuel Nyangwara. Going into this election, ODM will not recognize a middle ground or any gray lines. You are either with us or with them. Another group of rebellious MPs have been ordered to appear before the party's disciplinary committee on Thursday. The Yatigania East MP Mpuri Aburi, Kilifi South MP Mustafa Idi, Kilifi North MP Gideon Mungaru, North Hor MP Chachu Ganya, and Karachon MP James Rege. To those still standing on the fence, weighing options, who are doubting ODM's strength and determination, the window is closing and soon it will be too late. Money will not be a deterrent because even in the by-elections where money has been poured, Kenyans have reached a point where they have said enough is enough. However, Kitutu Chache MP Richard Onyonka and his Bomachage Chache counterpart Simon Ungari apologized to party leader Ray Lodinga over the association with Jubilee. The issues came well while we were being promised that certain things would be done for our constituencies if we were going to be Jubilee friendly. What happened is that we have realized that nothing is going to be done. We have realized that the country the country is taking the wrong direction. I'm at peace and I want to assure you that if in case I've stepped on anybody's toes or on the parties, then sorry, I want to say sorry to the party and general and the party leader. Thank you. But with the apology coming only less than four days before both vigorously campaigned for the Jubilee candidate in the just concluded in a checky word by elections, which was warned by the ODM candidate, members and especially those from Gusiland could hear none of it. At West Kufaulu, Kama Tutatembea, Naviongosu Wasembe, Naviongosu Wasiosima Maima. We saw it clearly on TV how these members who are dishing out money that have been given by GPD who are fighting our very supporters. As my person and as the chairman of the Church South Constituency who apologize to the party leader and to all of you. The party will now write to the Register of Political Parties, the IEBC, as well as clerks of the affected assemblies, informing them that the expelled members are no longer their members. Hence, the names should be struck off the party list. Within seven days, the registrar should write back to the party, informing them that the rebel members have been struck off the party list. The next step will be for the speakers to declare their seats vacant. As it stands now, the ball squarely lies in the court of the expelled members to appeal the decision early enough before their seats are declared vacant. The expelled members have an option of challenging the expulsion in a court of law which might just drag the whole process, given that there are only 10 months to the elections. Chris Dairo, KTN News. Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli is in the country on his very first ever visit to Kenya since he became president. President Uru Kenyatta is set to engage with him over Ambassador Amina Mohammed's candidature uh, for the African Union Commission chairperson and of course a myriad of other unsettling trade relations between the two countries. Joy Doreen Bira now reports. It is the first visit to Kenya by Tanzania's President John Pombe Magufuli since his election in October last year. Tunapigia na simu kwa mambo mengi, lakini kwa sababu simu wazi onekani hadharani, watu wengine hawajui. Sasa basi, mujue leo kwa mba huwa tunazungumza sana na mweshimewa uhuru kinyata. Safari hii pia, ni akutia maanani ya kwa mba, sisi 
kama Kenya na Tanzania twajua ya kwamba ndio tuweze tufaulu kwa yale ambayo yako mbele yetu Back in Tanzania, Magufuli, who is popularly known as the bulldozer, has in recent times been embroiled in an all-out war against corruption, a vice which he now admits is a major impediment to development across the region. Tuko na mpango na tunataka kuhakikisha ya kwamba tume speed up mambo ya barabara, ya kutoka kule bagamoyo, kuenda mpaka malindi, na pia barabara ambaye itakuwa inapitia izibania, kufungua pia the western region na ndio wananchi wetu waweze kusafiri kwa njia ambayo inastahili tuna lengo kubwa la kuleta uchumi na kuleta maendeleo kwa ajili ya nchi zetu sisi tu wa moja historically na tutaendelea kuwa wa moja but Kenya and Tanzania have recently been locked in perpetual saw trade disputes, the latest being Tanzania's snail pace to sign the European Union East African Community Economic Partnership Agreement, which if signed by all EAC countries, will provide full duty-free and quarter-free market access conditions for goods originating in the EAC partner states into the market of the European Union on a secure long-term basis, a signing that has since been postponed to January of 2017. The two counterparts are also expected to talk about the work permit fees charged to Kenyan nationals, high university fees charged to Kenyan nationals by the Tanzanian government, non-tariff barriers between both countries, operation of tour vans across our common borders after Tanzania allegedly banned Kenyan tour vans from accessing Tanzania's game packs, a move which saw Kenya return the sour grape when it reportedly banned Tanzanian buses from accessing the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. A conversation on Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohamed's candidature for the African Union chairpersonship is key as Tanzania's support will go a step towards ensuring full regional support. Joy Doreen Bira, KTN News. Pressure continues to mount on Health Cabinet Secretary Cleopa Mailu to step aside over the alleged 5.3 billion shilling scandal. Experts are pointing to what they term as theft by the ministry in the procurement of portable clinics, awards of tenders to several firms, including Sandals International, and issuance of a letter of credit. Our senior reporter Rita Tanina tells us more. At the government yard in Mariakani, 99 portable clinics lie as the Ministry of Health remains on the spot of an alleged 5.3 billion shillings scandal. And experts are pointing to several irregularities. One of them, how the national government got to procure the portable clinics, some of which will end up in the counties. Why is it that the, count, the uh, national ministry continues to want to provide services in the area of health? We saw this with the equipment scandal. Uh, this is now the second large um, example of why we should have stopped national uh, ministry procurement in goods and services for the health ministry. Then there is the 265 million shillings paid to the cooperative bank through a letter of credit for the supply of imported food supplements. For the government to actually guarantee or underwrite a loan, a credit, uh, a line of credit for a company, I think is highly risky and dubious. And the question we need to ask is, why would you need to do that when there are so many other companies out there that have the capacity to go to the banks on their own? Um, and why would you take on risk on behalf of a third party uh, supplier? To do so. So I think this needs to be investigated very uh, closely. The ministry has come under fire over the award of tenders to several companies. Sandals International is one such firm whose directors, among them Kathleen Kihanya, are close relatives of President Uru Kenyatta. Kihanya, in a press conference over the weekend, termed herself as disadvantaged. Um, we know that, and we know now that um, the Sundale company was given the contract on the grounds that they were, it was owned by women. But I think the spirit of the constitution has been that um, affirmative action in procurement essentially is to ensure that those communities, uh, largely poor communities, do not have, uh, who do not have access to government procurement, do have access. But essentially to provide that um, uh, opportunity to people who are actually not disadvantaged, in some ways highly advantaged, 
disadvantaged uh, and probably compromised, um, and actually not probably, definitely compromised in terms of their relationship with the head of state, that this should not um, have taken place. It is not the first time that the Ministry of Health is coming under scrutiny, but this time round, it may take more than just justification of numbers by the minister to restore credibility at Afia House. Rita Tinina, KTN News. Right, and let us remind you our big queue tonight. We're engaging with you on Graft Diaries. We are asking you, do you think CS and the Health Ministry Cleopa Milo should step aside pending investigations into the Graft claims? The CS alongside his peers, Nicholas uh, Muraguri, talk to us at KTN News, KTN Kenya, at Sophia Wanuna. Remember to use the hashtag Graft Diaries. You're watching Monday Night News. We'll be back with more after these few messages. And was in charge of the auditing at the National Youth Service, that's NYS. He has also worked in the public works, tourism, industrial ministries, as well as other government agencies. So now you know uh, the man in charge of the queries that have been raised in the Ministry of Health. You're watching Monday Night News. Thank you so much for staying with us. Remember, we're asking you on our big queue, do you think the CS in the Ministry of Health, that's Cleopa Mailu and his PS, Nicholas Moraguri, should step aside as investigations continue tweet us at ktn news at ktn kenya at sophia wanuna send in a message at double two one double five i will read some of your messages in the next few minutes right here on monday night news please stay with us tweet of the day in association with ldk extraordinary brandy Welcome back to Monday Night News. Let's now talk business and Kenya's inflation edged up to an eight-month high driven mostly by food prices in the face of drought and looming famine in many parts of the country. Overall, inflation rose 6.47% year-on-year in October, up from 6.34% last month. According to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, month-on-month -month basis, the inflation was at 0.62% compared with September 0.34%. Food is the largest contributor to the basket of good, uh, goods used in the index used uh, to measure inflation. Hence, it's weighting uh, consumers, however, got relief from falling cooking gas while the cost of petrol and electricity both uh, went up. The call to fast-track implementation of reforms in customs and tax dominated talks at the Regional Integration Conference taking place in Arusha, Tanzania, with calls for a regional regulator to shepherd the process. Here's KTN's Abi Agina, who's in Arusha, and filed this report for us. With a combined population of about 160 million people, the East Africa community is among the fastest-growing regional blocks in sub-Saharan Africa. Economically, the region remains um, one of the stronger ones uh, um, in sub-Saharan Africa and continues to do well. I think in some part, the, um, the increasing integration we've seen, uh, particularly in the trade dimension, uh, but also uh, some services, has contributed to this uh, strong growth outcomes that we've seen. The six member countries, namely Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda and South Sudan, have had their fair share of challenges, with some countries reneging on their commitments to deepen integration. Before going to the monetary union, according to the business community, we need to first have a working common market. We are very interested in strengthening and uh, indeed getting more integration. Some of the areas flagged by stakeholders that require to be urgently addressed is in sorting out work permits, custom procedures, as well as harmonization of tax policies. With intra-African trade now pegged at about 11%, policymakers are championing for more countries need to address matters to do with harmonization to allow for easier trade and easier movement of goods across borders. 
this remains one of the biggest challenge facing the regional economic blocs that continue to draw lessons from established blocs in the European Union. Reporting for KTA News, my name is Abi Agina in Arusha, Tanzania. Welcome back to Monday Night News in Sports. Tonight, AFC Leopards have unveiled former Azam FC coach Stuart Hall as a new coach on a two-year contract. The former sofa packer tactician revealed that he's looking forward to resurrecting a sleeping giant in his tenure and also to bring back a smile to Ingwe fans across the country. Hall takes over from Ezekiel Aquana, who was fired over the weekend. AFC Leopards Monday afternoon unveiled their third club tactician in a span of one season. Stewart Hall takes over the den from Ezekiel Aquana, who was shown the door after the Leopards failed to turn their fortunes in the league, where they now lie 13th with 30 points. Mr. Hall is no stranger to Kenyan football, as he took charge of Sofa Parker in 2012 and now takes charge of Ingwa with the intention of resurrecting a sleeping giant. I believe Stewart is our new Moses. He will lead us to the promised land. I can assure everybody I'll be working very hard uh, to change the fortunes of, of a, a fantastic and, and a, a famous club and get them back onto, uh, onto the road that they deserve to be on. Hall was selected from 49 applicants that eyed the job. The club says they will give the tactician a free hand to select his technical bench heading into the new season. I want to give the, Mr. Stewart a free hand to pick his own. Technical bench. I am here because I want to be here. I've taken a drop in salary. Uh, I've taken a drop in personal conditions and contract. Why? Because I want to be here. He believes from his assessment that a number of Leopard players no longer value the club and he will be chopping the squad at the end of the season while recruiting new players. I think the players lacked heart. I think they lacked passion. I think that they play almost as if they're confused. There's been, it's been a difficult season, as the chairman has catalogued. Uh, and I think because of that, I think uh, some of the players seem to have lost focus. The new tactician will be on the touchline this weekend when Ingwe faced Tasca in a title deciding encounter for the Brewers, and he will be leaving nothing to chance. Nakumat Football Club is seeking to finish the 2016 season on a high note as they add promotion into the Premier League. The Mombasa Road-based club failed to get promotion last season, but they feel this season they have what it takes to move to the top tier league despite tough competition in the National Super League. This is one of the teams from the National Super League that critics gave thumbs up heading into the 2016 season of getting promotion into the Premier League at the end of the season after getting into the finals of the Go TV Shield Cup last season. Despite starting the season on a winning note, the Mombasa Road-based outfit has failed to win their last five matches in the National Super League. Your football game is yeah, up and down. We are always at top. Sometimes we are down. But now we are going to be able to get the Na so far, vile tumeanza leo na vile tumeongea, come in games na jota chukua win. The team is working on that uh, game uh, Wednesday. Hopefully, mungu akipenda tutashinda. Nakumat lies fourth on the log with 59 points from 31 matches. Despite being 20 points behind leaders Nzoia Sugar, they believe they can finish among the top two teams in the league to bag a ticket to the Premier League. Lakin nationwide, ni ngumu, wawezi pata chance ya kutani na bo. So, mine za sema... Their next assignment in the league is against Moyes FC and they seek to bounce back after losing to KCB over the weekend. So anything can happen. Because uh, to never win is a game voter, to never draw. But side na fight here top. Nakumat FC finished sixth. Nakumat finished sixth in the National Super League in 2015. Robinson Okenye, KTN Sport. Issues and on behalf of all that made this bulletin tonight possible, we thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sophia Wanuna. Have a good night and God bless you.